Do you know one of the most powerful ways you can create an impact and facilitate change in today's time? It is to be able to create exponential results with your clients. How does one do that? Today, I'm gonna break down a coaching session by Master Coach Rich Litwin and show you how you too can create exponential results with your clients. So, let's roll it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, before we get started, I invite you to hit the subscribe button. This basically will allow you to get a notification every single time we release a new video right here on YouTube, which will be perfect for you because you will know when the next gem of knowledge, information, and insight is dropping on this channel. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And now, let's roll it. One of the ways I've found myself to become better and better at coaching is by watching masterful coaches do their thing in front of me and breaking it down to really go, oh, that's what they are doing. Oh, that's what that's happening. Oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. And that observation has helped me get better and better in different skills that you require as a coach. It is a great way to learn and see many principles that you may intellectually know, but practically have never seen in, in action. Now in this video, I am taking one of the sessions that Rich did at one of our events live in front of like 500 people, right? So what you're about to watch is a masterful coach showing a demonstration of what they're doing while they are also connecting to the audience of 400, 500 people who are there to listen and understand what's really happening. So I'm gonna go to my laptop and be watching this video, breaking it down for you. And then you will also see, sometimes Rich will be breaking it down for you what he just did. So let's get this party started. The sound of insight isn't wow. I mean, it's cool if you're a coach and a client goes wow. The real sound of insight is huh. I wanted to start showing with this. He has not even brought the coaches on stage just yet, but this is a very important piece to remember is wow may or may not happen, but your goal is to get the huh, because that is where insight has really occurred. Because huh is a moment your world shifted. Could that really be, is that possible? And so, as you watch this coaching in action today, my invitation to you is to allow yourself the transformation in here. If you're a coach, you can watch me and say, well, I like that, I'll do this, I don't like that. You're welcome to put yourself in the coach's seat, but I invite you to put yourselves in the client seat too as we play. So I wanna bring two people on stage, Mabel and Cassandra. Give them a, right, a round of applause, please. I got my two little boys in the audience here today. Hey guys, come and have a seat. Thank you. Hi, so I'm gonna invite you guys to ignore them. Let's assume it's just the three of us in the room for a moment. Oh, let's get a microphone for you guys. You bring it first, Cassandra, thanks. Hi. Hi. Thank you for, for saying yes to being here with me. Absolutely, my pleasure. Let's play. And I'm pausing for a moment because sometimes as a coach, the real power is in the listening. And that's listening to my own body. And I'm realizing, oh, I'm not fully present yet, so I can't begin. And I want to, because there's 400 people watching me. But listening is the most powerful piece of deep coaching. So I wanted to pause here to kind of instill this particular point that Rich makes. It may seem something that he's just doing, but look at how, and I've learned this from him, by the way. So it, it, it's all kudos to him to show me how it's okay 
to slow down if you need to slow down before you respond or before you start communicating because a lot of times as coaches we feel like oh there's a certain number of hours or minutes that you've dedicated to do this particular thing and we need to get to it as quickly as possible and that may sound right intellectually but what rich just did is to say even if he had a set number of time for his talk he said i'm going to take a minute because i'm pausing slowing down getting present to the conversation it's very very important and i think it's a masterful skill to to be able to do that and and let's see what 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 happens next deep listening hi and now i feel a little bit more present because i'm speaking what's what's real <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Cassandra, let's say we get together in three years' time mm -hmm. and you say these words, holy shit, Rich. And you say, holy shit, it's 2021 and my life has transformed both personally and professionally. What would you be talking about? What would you be telling me? I would definitely be talking. Classic and amazing opening question, isn't it? Setting the client immediately into the future of what would be the situation if we had met and so forth. And he really diagnoses that in a second. I wanna show you that, but I wanted to kind of bring that reflection right in here. So you go, okay, this is a great piece right here where he's setting up the conversation into a future scenario because it allows him to later on have a conversation in today's context. So it's very interesting to see how this plays out, but this is one of, I would say, the key things that I've learned in, in my career as a coach is that always set up your client into, into the future because it allows you to have a more empowered conversation. Think about it. He has just met this girl on this session and he immediately got to the point where he took her to a, to a conversation where he could have a more meaningful dialogue. It's brilliant, keep watching. Talking about personal-wise, yeah. uh, that, you know, I've got a baby on the way, and, um, you so know, So let's do just... it this way. Let, let's have you travel through time. Instead of telling me what you would be telling me, you know what, it's Mind Valley You. And, and we came back together again, and I brought you back on stage to see what's happened. So first of all, congratulations on the baby. Thank you. Muzzle top. We're super excited. Right. <laughs> um, elsewise, the business has been doing fantastic. We're about to open a new location um, outside of the States, and we've started working on our foster program. Tell me more about that. What's, what's the business doing these days? Well, uh, we're being able to reach so many more entrepreneurs and uh, changing the lives of small business owners just by taking all of the crud that they find themselves doing in their you know day-to-day -day business lives and getting them back into what they want to be doing by taking all of the operational stuff out. So, you know, we're opening another location. It's just, it's not just my San Francisco Bay Area location. It's also another location somewhere else in the world that we can start working in other languages and everything. Tell me, because I feel your energy rising. Like, what's, what's exciting about that? Yeah, this smile. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I've got this um, special little uh, thing that some, of, that some people like to call um, anal retentive. Uh, and I really enjoy finding the little things that are going to change people's lives mm. and really just getting into the meat of something and then just poof, showing the one thing that can be sewn together or sewn into their own systems and their lives to make things easier. So that thing that for most people we would call anal retentive is actually the thing that juices you. Exactly. Yeah, it's um, just pattern recognition and then finding the patterns that are going to be the most impactful and then implementing them and being able to see uh, a client's eyes light up, just going like, oh my God, I finally have some space to myself. Huh. Um, I love that response. Yeah. Seeing a client's, client's eyes light up, like that brings so much energy into my body when I see that. So I mm -hmm. totally get that. So tell me back three years. You remember that time we sat on a stage in front of that group of people? What, what was holding you back back then? 
What a brilliant question. Did you see how beautifully Rich was able to take a future paced conversation, a conversation that was happening in the future as if it is the present and now moving her parents, uh, present circumstance as something that's happened in the past. He'll explain a little bit more, I think, later in this, in this video. Let's see what's happening. Mostly burnout. Um, burnout from my corporate job and um, from the four and a half years of you know, less sleep and um, nonstop work. Uh, and then what, was just, that just to, and take me back a bit in time. I'm mm -hmm. imagining that was some of your story even before then you, that you knew that as a story because what I hear out in the future is that's what you help other people avoid is that burnout. Absolutely. Did you know it for real in your own life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, for a couple of months now, I started my own firm um, at the beginning of that year, right? Uh, and. Huh to help other people avoid the issues that I was facing. So, you know, getting, getting my life back on track and getting my self-worth back because I tied it so hard into, you know, running this other firm. Um, and you, I just you spent what was my the other entire firm? life. It was a tax firm. And you ran it for somebody else? Yes. Yeah, I was the director uh, and spent four years of my life trying to keep him off drugs uh, and increase his company, which I did, you know, threefold by the time I left. But making it so that I myself lost my personal life and I lost my spiritual life and I lost absolutely everything else um, just because I subsumed myself with work. Because yeah. it's something I love and something I'm good at. But at the same time, Boundaries are a thing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk some of the time to the audience and ask them, who knows that feeling of having a job that you love so much that it's actually hard to switch off from it because it feels so good to be working? Who, who knows that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine a lot of people in this room. So we're, we're not alone. I know that one too. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to the conversation, but I'm also listening for the perspective that my client's coming from. I want to see how she sees her world. So I'm getting a sense of what it was like in the past, how you were burnt out, the vision you have in the future, where you want to go. I'll put this up because you can see here. So I've got a sense of the dream. What's the fear? We always have this, the dream and the fear. What's standing in your way, slowing you down or holding you back mm -hmm. from everything that you want right now? Honestly, it's like several different kinds of fear. Um, I'm scared to work hard again. I'm scared to put myself back into that mind frame where I subsume myself in work again um, in order to, you know, make my money. And, you know, I was making good money previously and I spent all of it getting my business set up and going to Mind Valley U and, uh, and I was so burned out that I couldn't work. Um, so and you're afraid so, you might replicate that old behavior, that old pattern. Exactly. So I've got some kind of, you know, money fear going on along with too much uh, work. I'm, I'm scared of burning myself out again. Hmm. So there's definitely that kind of, um, in Mind Valley terminology, abundance block going on there. Well, actually, it sounds to me that you have what I call a perfect system, that you're a master. If we said, we want you to teach a class to everybody here about how to accomplish amazing goals, build a business threefold, three times the revenue and, it, and impact, and burn yourself out in the process. You would know exactly how to teach that, right? Oh, I absolutely could. I, I would be very, very good at that class. So teach me for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I actually want you to take Cassandra's system for creating three times the revenue in any business you go to and burning yourself out in the process. Uh, well, first, it starts off with um, something from Eric Edmead's class that I listened to earlier. Uh, do it all yourself. Great. <laughs> that doesn't work so well, does it? Great. So, so don't worry about them. <laughs> Stay with me. Mm -hmm. Teach me. So, so, Rich, do it all yourself. Rich, do it all yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
focus more on getting what you're getting done instead of fighting with yourself to force, you know, whatever owner you happen to be working with into doing what's right for the business. Um, definitely that one, Got it. um, because since, since we've been hired to do this, clearly that also means that we need to fight with the owner to make sure that we're doing our jobs. Okay. Okay. So add that level of tension in addition to doing all of the coding yourself to doing all of the system set up yourself, all of the process formalization and setup, so all of the hiring all the tension and then make up a rule that I have to do all these different things and take that all on as my own responsibility. Exactly. What's the secret one that, that no one would know, like the, the really secret one about the masterful way to create three times the revenue and burn yourself out in the process? So what I'm doing is messing with her thinking. She wants to have this be something bad, but actually it's something amazing, it's a gift in here. And as we're drawing this out, I'm helping, I, I once worked with a woman who said, I constantly date emotionally unavailable men. I said, that sounds amazing, teach me how to do that. <laughs> and she had it down, she had a 17 point system, she could run seminars on it. But it brought a sense of humor to the struggle that she had. And from there we were able to look at, well what if that looked different? So what I'm doing here is leadership. I'm leading the client at times. I'm here to serve her, not to please her. I'm here to draw out a sense of what's the truth or tell the truth if it's needed. So let me come back to you. Did you get one? Is there a secret one that no one would know? Be lonely. Uh, how do I do that? I'm see, an see introvert. She knows, right? Like I'm messing with her thinking right now. <laughs> I, she said be lonely. How do, how do you do that? And her, you, your brain began to spin. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm an introvert, so thankfully that's very natural for me, and I hear you are too, so it shouldn't be difficult. Yeah, just be yourself. Nice, thank you. <laughs> so let's pause there. Let me come to Mabel. So we're gonna pause here too, because what I wanna really get you to see is through the course of this conversation, and this is why I wanted to show this piece of the coaching session is because you will see that Rich took the opportunity to really listen to what Cassandra was saying all the time. And because he was taking and giving her the space to be able to talk, he could find elements in her conversation that he could pull from and can expand on and create a narrative that would switch around her thinking in a more useful way. And so instead of her feeling like she's a failure or not knowing what to do or feeling confused or overwhelmed with everything that's happening in her life, she could actually see the gift in all of it. Another thing that you may have observed is he pauses and takes the time that he needs to take to be able to ask a question. And a lot of times these questions are curious. They are mostly to inquire a further dialogue on a, on a, on a vertical or, a, or an element of the conversation that he knows has the power to move her to in, into a positive and a more powerful state. So Rich does this all through again and again during this coaching session and future coaching sessions that you may see online that we have made available here on the Evercoach channel. Now, you might wonder, well, Rich can do it, I can't. Well, to be very honest, Rich has broken his way of coaching down to eight principles that lead to exponential results for his clients. Below this video, you will find the link that will take you to that class. I'm sure you're curious to know how can you be better and create even more exponential results with your clients? Well, that class is perfect for you. Go ahead and check out that class. Before you go and do that though, what I want you to do is tell me your observations of this session. Share with me what are some of the things that you spotted? What are some of the nuances that you noticed that we could all learn from. It'll be amazing to make this almost like a practice part where we are dissecting and trying to figure out what is Rich doing in a particular place and what we can learn from it and we can learn from each other that way. So go ahead and put that in the comment section below, things that you've observed, so that way I can learn from you and everybody else that is watching this video on the Evercoach Tribe can learn from you. So go ahead and do that every single week. I create videos like this for you on Evercoach by Mind Valley YouTube channel. 
It'll be amazing to have you as a subscriber so we can send you a notification every single time we release a new video. So go ahead, hit the red subscribe button so you can get a notification every single time we post a new video. I'm sure you loved watching Rich coach somebody how, as much as I do. So go ahead and hit the like button so Rich can know and I can know you really appreciated that. And lastly, and very importantly, don't forget to share your thoughts on the different elements that you saw Rich doing so we can learn from you as much as we have learned from Rich. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week.